Hello everyone, welcome to Adams and Sporks, and on this hot, hot summer's day in my apartment with no air conditioning, I want to make a short little video to sort of dispel some misconceptions about what summer really is. Now there are actually a number of pretty obviously wrong explanations for what causes the seasons on the internet. The most popular is probably the belief that since the Earth's orbit around the Sun is not a perfect circle, it's actually kind of like a squished ellipse, well then summer occurs when the Earth passes closest to the Sun, what's called perihelion, and winter is when it's the furthest, which is called aphelion. So the seasons are all about literally being closer or further from the Sun. But of course, you think about that for like five seconds and you can pretty much immediately realize it's not true. For one, perihelion actually happens around January, which is actually winter in the Northern Hemisphere. But also, how would that cause the length of days to change? And you know, the entire planet does not experience summer at the same time. When it's summer in one hemisphere, it's winter in the other. So, as I'm sure most of you knew, seasons have nothing to do with aphelion and perihelion, and the real reason is because the Earth's axis of rotation has about a 24 degree tilt relative to the plane it orbits, the Sun. And this definitely does cause the length of days to vary throughout the year. To see why, rather than imagining sun rays coming in parallel and the Earth is tilted, it's maybe easier to visualize this by imagining the Earth's rotation is straight up and down and the sun's rays coming in at a tilted angle. Because of this, say you're in the northern hemisphere, it's say like the Tropic of Cancer, well throughout a day on the surface of the Earth, you sweep out this circle. And you can see that in this orientation, most of your day is illuminated by the sun. Where for the exact same day in the southern hemisphere, most of your day is dark. So summers definitely do have longer days and winters shorter days, that's for sure. So unlike the perihelion aphelion thing, at a surface level, it definitely seems quite plausible that this is the main reason for what makes summers so hot. But again, if you think about it a bit, it does fall apart pretty quickly. I mean, by this logic, shouldn't the place with the longest days have the hottest summers? Well, the place with the longest days are the Arctic and Antarctic, which are definitely not known for their toasty summers. In fact, to be a bit more quantitative about this, let's look at the actual intensity of the sunlight in a sample city, like say my hometown of Toronto, Canada, which if you're not too up on Canadian geography and have an image of like Canada as an endless Arctic wasteland, is actually a city that is more south than Portland and like most of Germany. It's pretty close to New York City. And what we want to look at in Toronto is a plot like this, which shows the solar intensity, in other words, the amount of energy or heat the sun is depositing on a flat surface every second versus the time of day. Another way of thinking of this is to imagine you have like a solar panel and asking how much power could that solar panel generate in a given month at a given time of day. And on this graph, let's consider the two extremes of the year, the summer solstice in June, which is the longest day of the year, and the winter solstice in December, which is the shortest. Right away, you can maybe see the issue here. Even if the winter day was as long as the summer day, if you can imagine like magically extending it, but keeping the sunlight level the same, it'd still only get about half the total amount of solar energy being deposited in a day. The real issue is that even at peak intensity in the middle of the day in Toronto, sunlight is not nearly as intense in the winter as it is in the summer. That's why in the Arctic, when it's sunny for a full 24 hours, it's still cold as hell, because the sunlight is very, very weak. And this is caused by two additional related consequences of the Earth's tilt. You see, to understand how much energy the sun deposits at a given spot on the Earth, it's not enough to simply know whether the sun is up or not, but you also need to understand the angle it's coming from. Imagine the sun is perfectly above you. This means that if you were to kind of divide a cross section of the sunlight into like little unit squares, then every square meter of sunlight would fall on a corresponding square meter on the surface. What about if the sun is very low in the sky? Well then, each of those little unit squares is kind of projected onto the surface, and each unit is spread over a much larger surface area. And so the intensity on the surface is reduced. 
The second related effect is that if the sun is at a shallow angle, the amount of atmosphere it has to pass through is greater. The more atmosphere it passes through, the greater the chance is either scattered back out to space or absorbed in the higher atmosphere and not directly heating the surface. And really, it is these effects that are making summers hot. It's not so much how long the sun is up in the sky, but how shallow it is when it is. And it's also worth noting that these are two distinct effects. The first is entirely just a matter of geometry. And for example, if you have a solar panel, you can correct for it by simply tilting the panel. However, the second effect, which is sometimes called air mass, uh, changes with altitude, with cloud cover, and weather, and pollution, and so on. So summarizing, seasons are the result of the Earth's tilt relative to its plane of orbits, and this tilt ultimately has three distinct effects. It affects the lengths of days, but it also affects the incident intensity of sunlight, and the amount of atmosphere that sunlight has to pass through. Although I may be a bit overstating things in the title, the first effect obviously contributes somewhat, it is definitely often overemphasized rather than the effect of the other two, which are quite substantial. So I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. I think I'm going to go melt into a puddle and have a good one.